I'm beginning to see birdies around my head. I think Moderna is one of those stocks that's slated to continue this explosion. Come with me as we explore future exploding stocks. Hi, <clears throat> I'm Stephen Fox, and I'm a retired psychologist that's interested in finding exploding the stocks in the future. I think we're in a bit of a market pullback for now. Uh, we, we have the market leaders uh, being uh, buoyed upwards by the likes of Amazon, uh, Google, and Apple, and so forth. But the majority of stocks, and especially stocks that retail investors buy, have been going down for some time. Um, Moderna has been going up be and, and is being rewarded for how well they have served the public. Uh, they and two other vaccines uh, by Pfizer and Johnson & Johnson is literally returning life to normal. Right now, what we have is a pandemic of the unvaccinated. People being hospitalized are virtually almost all the unvaccinated. If you're vaccinated, you're protected from death pretty much and a very low probability of being hospitalized even. Uh, so it's a good idea for everyone to get vaccinated. Uh, the United States is about 70% or close to 70% vaccinated, uh, but other countries are far behind us and we need to, uh, to help those countries. And that, of course, that's going to mean more sales of the vaccine uh, to the developing world and other parts of the world uh, that are very anxious to, to have the vaccine. And I think would have trouble believing that there's people in this country who don't want the vaccine as it is a lifesaver. So how does this new technology work? Uh, both Pfizer and Moderna have used messenger RNA, which is the first time this has ever been done. And this is why the vaccines became developed so fast. Uh, they used CRISPR uh, technology, which is a gene editing uh, uh, system uh, and so they were able to take the virus apart and see its vulnerabilities. And then uh, the, the messenger RNAs, they're, they're changing uh, the, the instructions to the cells of your body. When you receive the vaccine, the messenger RNA tells the cells what proteins to develop. And they, they know what proteins need to be developed uh, because the scientists have taken apart the virus and, and seen its vulnerabilities and what the body needs to combat it. So this is, this, uh, these vaccines are very, very much working with your body. They're basically telling you how to fight the virus uh, and, and sending these instructions. Um, uh, once the, the uh, uh, cells receive the instructions uh, from the vaccine, they then can make protective proteins that will help the body uh, fight off and prevent infections. If we look at Moderna's uh, pipeline, it only makes you love the stock even more. Of course, their most important uh, vaccine is for COVID-19 using the messenger RNA and it's been very successful. Uh, we've seldom seen vaccines like Pfizer and Moderna uh, get above 80 and 90 percent. Uh, they are in phase two with a cytomegalia virus. Uh, that's something that everybody has. Uh, well, not everybody has, but they estimate about 40 percent of adults uh, have ha have the virus within them, but it just doesn't get expressed because your immune system uh, uh, takes care of it. When it becomes dangerous is when your immune system is compromised and can no longer uh, fight off infections. Um, 
they have a lot of vaccines in development, mostly at the stage one uh, stage, uh, the phase one stage, where uh, they are trying to get uh, vaccines for uh, pneumonia uh, and RS RSV, uh, which is a respiratory uh, disease that caused quite a problem in Asia for a while, I believe, about a year or two ago, before COVID-19. Uh, they have different uh, flu vaccines that they're working on. And when they list this uh, uh, influenza H7N9 uh, vaccine, I believe that's the flu that was uh, becoming a problem when Obama was president. So basically, they're always coming out with a new vaccine for flus every year. And their overriding goal is to use the different messenger RNAs to develop an all-encompassing flu vaccine that will treat every variety of, of flu. Uh, it's a very ambitious goal, uh, but they can combine uh, several different messenger RNAs together in one shot. In fact, it's, it's thought and it's, it's thought possible that they can combine uh, the COVID-19 vaccine, uh, uh, combine a, a booster element for, for any uh, uh, mutants that come along, and also combine that with, with the yearly uh, flu shot uh, so that you only have to go through it once or twice. It might still need to be uh, two vaccines uh, uh, although that remains to be seen. Do people need to have it twice? Uh, I suspect it might be possible that you only need a booster uh, since the groundwork has already been laid uh, for your system to know something about how to, how to fight the different viruses, including COVID-19. But what's really fascinating is they have, they're working on cancer vaccines and they're in stage two on what they call a personalized cancer vaccine. Uh, and that's got to be groundbreaking. Uh, but I, I've never, I haven't heard of a company trying to develop vaccines for cancer. Uh, I don't know if that was even thought to be possible. Uh, if we continue and look at the next uh, chart, we can notice that there's some very strange diseases on here. And that's because uh, the go governments of the world will actually pay to have companies investigate rare viruses. Uh, the the, chikung, the chikung, <laughs> chikungunya virus, which is a mosquito-borne illness uh, in Africa and Asia, uh, they're paid by a government agency to work on that because it's not commercially profitable. Uh, they also work on the Zika virus and actually are quite far along with that, but there's less than a thousand cases uh, like in the United States, uh, but the government uh, very much wants rare diseases investigated uh, to have hope for the people. Uh, who otherwise uh, would not have hope. Um, again, the, the cancer uh, vaccines, the thought of vaccinating for cancer, I haven't heard before. Uh, they're into uh, heart medications and uh, are developing a myocardial ischema medication that's in at least phase two. And then there's some other uh, very uh, speculative uh, things that they are working on. So uh, they have at least t uh, 10 different drugs in some stage of development, uh, and, and then they have others that are being further developed and researched at this time. So it is very much not a one-trick pony. This messenger RNA can be applied to many diseases and, and brings great hope to the world. So let's take an x-ray of this company's chart and financials. We can see that it's done very, very well. Uh, I, I included Tesla in this chart. 
Uh, the dark blue is Moderna, the light blue is Tesla, uh, the, the purple line is the 50-day average of Moderna. Uh, but it's been referred to, Moderna has uh, been referred to as the Tesla of biotech. And you can see why. Um, Tesla, of course, had uh, the great run-up when they were being admitted to the S&P 500. Uh, it went close or over $900 um, at, right after it got admitted to the S&P 500. And I sold somewhere in the eight to 900 range. Um, I made quite a bit of money on Tesla over the years and it's really gotten me <laughs> addicted to explosive stocks. And that's why I keep trying to recreate the experience. And. Uh, I don't know that Moderna would do that totally. Um, Tesla was such uh, uh, a special case in many ways, and I've never seen anything like it in my life, and I've never made that much. I, I made half a million dollars off it. I, I've never made that much money off a of stock in my life. Uh, but Moderna, the feature, it, it has the the messenger RNA platform and got and that can be applied to multiple vaccines and multiple treatments uh, and so I think we have something here that like Tesla it has a lot of different facets and it can keep going up when you <clears throat> look at the valuation measures on uh, Moderna my first reaction is wow uh, if you look at the market cap its market cap in, at the end of March was 11 billion, and now it's 115 billion. But the enterprise value is 107 billion. So it, it doesn't look vastly overpriced. I mean, the enterprise value is very close to the market cap. Uh, and we have this news that it's joined the S&P 500, and we expect it to explode further after that at least for a while. Uh, whether it will keep going, it, that is the question. But when you look at the trailing uh, price to earnings, it's about 233, but the forward PE is about $12. I mean, not $12, the forward PE is 12. Uh, that is amazing. It never made a profit until the first quarter of this year when it made about 45 cents. So they're expecting it to be very profitable and to have lots of customers and lots of countries signing on uh, that are looking for this uh, savior for their economy. And lastly, if we bring up the chart comparing uh, Moderna with the other two vaccine developers, of Pfizer and Johnson and Johnson, uh, Moderna's gone up a lot since uh, February of last year. It's gone up 115 percent, while uh, uh, Pfizer has gone up about 10 percent, and Johnson Johnson's gone up about four percent. Um, Moderna is quite a bit smaller than these companies, even with its expanded valuation. It's 115 billion, while Johnson Johnson is the giant at over 400 billion, and and Pfizer is over 200 billion. So uh, Moderna has a lot of room to grow. My negative blockhead self says. Oh, but it's run up so high. It's gone up so fast. It's got to come crashing down. They only got one drug to their credit. And then there's my positive self that says, but hey, look, they've got this brand new platform on which to develop drugs. They've already defeated a pandemic. They're proposing vaccines for cancer. Who does that? They're cooperating with other drug companies. Uh, they look like the Tesla of biotech to me. So to buy or not to buy Moderna, July 21st, when it gets accepted into the S&P is forcing the issue. If you're lucky, you could get in at a good price. If it, if it 
takes off like Tesla, which very possibly could do. Uh, on the other hand, you could get a shorthand pop and then have it sink down, which would then give you another a entry point, which I will probably favor more the second one than the first one, but both are viable courses of action. Please hit the like button and the subscribe button if this has been helpful to any extent, and I'll see you in the next video.